Overlook Horizon. Good afternoon to you today. It is uh, June 3rd, 2021. It's a Thursday here, and uh, we're here for a little uh, another SpaceX launch, of course, uh, for uh, CRS 22. This is a commercial resupply services contract. 
uh, sending supplies to the International Space Station. So this is NASA is the customer today. SpaceX is the launch provider. They, they've actually started earlier than I expected. I didn't expect, expect them to start this early because usually they don't start until about 15 minutes prior to launch, but they're going. They've already, they've already uh, uh, pulled the trigger. So they've got uh, everything up and running and they've uh, started chatting it up here we're gonna, I'm gonna switch over to them so we can listen in, we can see the rocket. You know, everybody wants to, to see the rocket, of course. Show the rocket! Uh, but I do wanna kinda jump in, jump around, and uh, we'll give you kind of an overview as to what's gonna be happening today and uh, what uh, what the mission is. So, get some cool views. Uh, we do have, uh, there's our drone ship, obviously, uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. We are gonna see, hopefully, a drone ship landing. We'll see a drone ship landing attempt, uh, but you know, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty good at these things these days. So fingers crossed, knock on wood, you know, do whatever you got to do. We, we, we're going to have a drone ship landing today. Obviously no payload fairing catch or recovery today because payload fairings don't exist for this particular mission. This is a cargo dragon launch, very similar to the crew dragon. You can see it here. Uh, this is the cargo dragon version two. So different than the original Cargo Dragon, the version one. Uh, this is version two, which looks a whole lot uh, very similar to the Crew Dragon capsule. The big difference that you might notice is that there are no Super Draco abort engines. We have uh, basically the housing or the shape of what where they would appear, but there's no openings underneath them. So there's no abort engines there because there's no crew on board. We don't need the the abort capabilities for that. Now. We don't know whether they, I, we assume, but we don't know for sure whether they, what kind of abort contingencies they may have for cargo to save the cargo. Because if you remember way back in the day, I think it was like 2000, was it like 2014 or something like that? The CRS-7 mission. SpaceX unfortunately lost the CRS-7 mission due to a malfunction. And the capsule actually survived the initial the breakup of the vehicle, but they had no way to save the capsule and all the uh, the experiments that were on board the uh, the capsule itself. So they had said at the time that they were going to add the capability for to uh, to use parachute to basically trigger the parachutes to come out in the event that something like that were to happen. We don't know if they kept that capability around for uh, Dragon Version Two, but I assume they did. I mean. Why not? So, uh, man, our, my music here is just way too, way too chill. <laughs> there we go. We should try to get something that's a little more upbeat. We don't want it to be, we don't want to go sleepy town here. We could, we could go like pump up jams too. Anyway, so hello to everybody. Let's let's check in with chat here real quick before I jump into jump into my stuff and we'll show you kind of the trajectory that's happening today. We'll take a look at weather, all that kind of stuff. We'll take a look at it. Um, let's see. This Falcon 9 smells like a new car. Yeah, so you might notice this is a uh, this is a new Falcon 9 booster. Uh, not this is kind of uh, relatively uncommon. We don't see this very often. The super shiny boosters. So typically we, we've been seeing them launch reuse boosters over and over and over again. Uh, this is a brand new Falcon 9 booster today. Uh, so brand new, shiny, new car smell, new new rocket smell, whatever, whatever that smells like. Uh, and uh, also interesting, they did not do a static fire for this particular uh, mission. So usually they would do a static fire. They would fire up the engines for about seven or eight seconds the day or two before the actual launch. Uh, but NASA said that they didn't need it. NASA's the customer. They kind of call the shots with stuff like this because they're paying a lot of money to get these these supplies to the International Space Station. But all these static fires are, uh, they're always the second static fire because they do a static fire at McGregor where they assemble these or test these uh, prior, to, prior to shipping them to Cape Canaveral. And so they did that with this booster and NASA said, yeah, that's good enough. We don't we don't need you to do it again. So they did not do another static fire for this one. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, Cat K over on YouTube says, so there, there's baby squid on there. Yes, there are baby squid along with another like 5,000 microscopic animals that they're sending to the International Space Station. But yes, one of them is baby squid today. So they're sending baby squid to the International Space Station. I know they've sent fish and aquatic animals before to the International Space Station, but that still kind of blows my mind because I, I can't imagine the thought process going through the uh, a fish's brain when they're they all of a sudden they're put into zero g and they're in in a tank with water i'm in zero g and all of a sudden i don't know how i don't know how that works i i've i've heard that they adapt pretty quickly but that seems kind of crazy that's got to be uh imagine being a fish and all of a sudden yeah you know, i mean obviously you don't get a memo of what's about to happen but that would be kind of be kind of crazy all of a sudden they, they got to be like what what is happening here? What what are we doing? Send lobsters, says Dan. I'm I'm with you, Dan. Send we gotta send some lobsters. Space lobster ate the tea tab. That's that's the answer. That's the answer. Um Alright, so let's jump in and we'll see uh the squitter go, says Melina. <laughs> uh yeah, so let's jump in and uh we'll see what's on track for today robot dave says 2016 for, was it 2016 for crs7 i know it was crs7 but i can't remember i can't i can't remember the, the date uh off the top of my head that's that's too much for me to remember on the spot uh all right let's jump while they're playing some some promo reels here let's uh let's jump in and we'll see uh what's in store for today so here's our trajectory map courtesy of flight club Dot io if you want to play around with some sim uh, simulations and see all the crazy mathematical models that Declan over at flightclub.io puts together definitely go check that out there's a web a web address so just open your favorite web browser which is hopefully not like internet explorer or something like that and go to flightclub.io and you too can play around with this and struggle with the navigation i should like i should get better at this Anyway, so here's here's what we have in store for today. This is our uh, this is our trajectory. So obviously we're launching from Cape Canaveral. I mentioned that just a second ago, but this is Pad 39A, the big launch complex at the Kennedy Space Center. Launched Apollo, launched Space Shuttle, the big one. It launches Falcon Heavy, launches Crew Dragon, and now Cargo Dragon. Uh, so it's the only pad that's capable of doing that uh, up here. This is 39B. That's uh, that's all outfitted for uh, the SLS rocket someday, hopefully later this year. I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be like February 2022, but SLS from 39B. 39A, SpaceX has a long-term lease for that, so that's where we're launching from today. Heading uh, northeast early direction so that it can meet up with the International Space Station. We go under powered flight to here. Separation event. That'll The first stage booster will continue on, do an entry burn and a landing burn out here in the Atlantic Ocean. And then the second stage, obviously, will continue on into orbit and do its old catch-up to the International Space Station. So it'll track that down and get docked to it. Uh, I don't, the docking is scheduled for, to, is it tomorrow? I don't actually, I probably should have looked that up beforehand, but. Uh, let's see, when is the, what time is the docking scheduled for? Anybody, anybody have that information? <laughs> I probably should have looked that up. Docking, uh, June 5th. Okay, June 5th at uh, 9 UTC. So that's like 5 a.m. my time on june 5th uh so that's when the actual docking will occur and uh let's see we'll continue on to uh, a couple i saw one of the comments that i saw uh right before i went live uh was somebody asked are there seats in the cargo dragon there are not seats in the cargo dragon those are all gone it's actually a completely different interior and it looks something like this uh this is the interior uh from the last cargo dragon mission so they have a bunch of racks and straps inside the cargo dragon to fully maximize space and uh basically pack it as full as they can because you know these are expensive and few and far between as far you know if you're uh if you're uh, a crew member on the international space station and you're trying to order your groceries 
They only come once every six months, so pack it all in. Uh, but this is what it looks like. The, uh, the straps, uh, racks and straps system that they have here. Uh, this is when they were loading the last, uh, the last Cargo Dragon mission. Um, and then this is, uh, Soichi Noguchi inside the Cargo Dragon. So here's a little, little selfie pic here from Soichi, uh, on, when he was on board the International Space Station and unpacking it. So that's what it looks like. No seats. Don't need them. There, I mean, space inside, space for cargo and payload into space is uh, space going to space. It's a lot of spaces. Uh, is is critical. So not going to have seats if you don't if you don't need it. Uh, all right, let's take a look. We'll we'll take a look at uh, weather here real quick. Weather looking okay for today. Not spectacular, but okay. Not too bad. Uh, we had uh, the 45th Space Wing uh, uh, Weather Squadron, which is now... Oh, uh, they just changed their name. They're like 40 f the 45th Delta or something from the Space Force. Stay I don't know, they changed their name. Uh, I <laughs> but they, uh, they put out the mission execution forecast. They're calling for a 40% chance of violating launch conditions. Primary concerns would be cumulus clouds and flight through precipitation. So 40% no go, that would mean 60% go, which is pretty good. We've launched under these conditions, so not uh, not too bad there. Uh, the additional risk criteria for like upper level winds, booster recovery, solar activity, all that kind of stuff is uh, in good shape. That's a low risk for today. So really it's, it's the precipitation and clouds that we gotta keep an eye on. So uh, while we're talking about that, let's pull up our precipitation and clouds. Here's our wind speed, not looking too bad, 15 miles per hour on the ground, upper level winds, low concern. We're only talking 20, 30 miles per hour. And really it's just the just the window right over the launch site that, uh, that they have to be concerned about. So neither of those are that big of a deal, but we do have some clouds in the area. That's the, uh, that's the big thing. Let's get rid of that. We do have clouds here in the area. Uh, let's look at our radar. Here's your precipitation that's in the area. Now it's looking pretty good, but you can see how they can't fly through precipitation. So if all of a sudden this, a little cell pops up and goes over the launch site, that would be, that would be bad. Here's what the predicted precipitation is for 1.30 PM. That's our launch time in about 14 minutes here. Uh, it's actually 1.29, but you can see the precipitation is very close. Our launch pad is, is right up here. Or is it it's up here, actually, I think. Launch pad right up here. It's very, very close. Um, but it looks like we may have a hole. So fingers crossed that it will be in good shape for launching today. And again, it's just got to be a small hole to get up and over the, and through the precipitation layer, the cloud layer, the upper level winds. And then you're, I mean, you go up and over it pretty, pretty quickly. So it's not, uh, it's not like this, this stuff down here, not a concern. Not a big deal. It's really just just directly over the launch site here. Just need need a hole to punch through, quite literally. Um, all right, so I think that covers uh, most of uh, most of my stuff. So they're still doing promos here. We got the the rocket on the pad. Let me see. Does my I have a I have a thing that does a thing. Um, <laughs> I have a thing that, let's see, uh, we do this one. Does it line up? No, it doesn't quite. No, that looks terrible. Okay, so we're going to go to this view. They don't, <laughs> they don't use the same. I have our, our streaming set up for, uh, for NASA streams when they have these like offset windows like this. I can switch to like this view to kind of make, make one of the windows bigger, but it it's, they, they have a slightly different format for this broadcast than uh than like the crew the crew dragon missions unfortunately so so i can't do that I'll try to set that up for next time i just have to hope that they do use the same format every time all right let's let's see what are they playing here let me turn oh, this looks like we have a stowaway turn this up here oh the little penguin has anybody been able to get their hands on the penguin from the last crew dragon mission i have not been able to get to get uh to order a penguin. Been trying, but they've been out of stock. All right, let's uh, let's grab some comments. Um, 
William Stewart over on Facebook says there's some thunderstorms in Vero Beach. Yeah, they're uh, they're kind of they're kind of scattered around a little bit. That's our concern for today. But it looks, if I, hey, is this why is this such bad quality? Oh, it's because it's NASA and it's only streaming in 720. That's why. Okay. Well, if we get rid of that, you can see, like it, we've got blue skies in the area. So it's not looking too bad. Blue skies, but there are some some pretty thick looking clouds in the distance. We also obviously can't see behind the camera, but uh, stuff scattered around all over the place. But we're 11 minutes to launch and the clock is still running, which is great news. Although my clock is one second off of theirs. Let's, uh, let's fix that real quick. There we go. Okay, uh, let's see what else we've got uh, for comments. Is an in instantaneous launch window do the ISS? Yes, it is an instantaneous launch window uh, because we, we have to meet up with the International Space Station. So you can see here, here's the International Space Station right now. Uh, this is... Uh, from Stuff in Space, currently over the Pacific Ocean, heading towards Florida, and you can see exactly why we're launching at this time, because this is, it's gonna pass almost directly overhead. It's not quite directly overhead, but it's, it's very, very close. And the rocket only has so much capability to correct that orbital plane there so that it can match up, because you really have to be in exactly the same orbit in order to do a rendezvous. So use a lot of fuel, a lot of, uh, you know, there's only so much of a margin that you have there to make those sort of orbital corrections. So going to pass directly overhead uh, pretty soon here. I think usually it passes overhead. I can't remember if this one's going to pass overhead before or after, uh, but uh, it, it passes almost directly overhead. It's not completely directly. It's not completely overhead, but they're, uh, they're going to make a flyby here shortly. All right, let's see. Hey, TJ Cooney, my friend TJ from the YouTube channel. I need more space. Should definitely be subscribed to TJ's channel for sure. But thanks, TJ. TJ gave me sent over a super chat. Thanks, man. Said uh, I've been thinking about space pizza a lot. Since layers are crucial, we'll need to bake it in a pizza centrifuge. What? <laughs> I don't have you. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do for space pizza. Is space pizza a thing? I'm sure they've got to have space pizza. Update your map. It says uh, Cosman, what map are you referring to? This is this is way more thought. TJ has put way more thought into space pizza than I have. Zero G top toppings will fly all over the place. <laughs> yeah, right. It, well, I guess that's that's true. You'd have to go. You'd have to make like the cardinal sin, at least in, in my opinion, which is put all the toppings underneath and then put the cheese on <laughs> to keep, sort of like solidify it down to the. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I see what you're saying. You need to bake it in a centrifuge so that they would stay there while the cheese is melting so you can kind of solidify it to the crust but i don't think i could be a part of that because you can't you can't put the toppings under the cheese that's just i, I want no part of that that, that is that makes me upset <laughs> just make chicago deep dish i, I don't like that i can't do it i don't want no part of that i can't I don't, I don't like the deep dish pizza i'm a i'm a new york like thin crust kind of guy that's that's uh that's my style. Calzone says uh, Wom Wombicus. I maybe I could do that. Calzone or hot pocket. <laughs> what are your thoughts on folding pizza? Like fold it to eat it? I'm okay. Like you like to fold it up to you know shove it into. To, yeah, I could I could do that. I'm all right with that. We'll need to work up some procedures. Yeah, yeah. We this is essential because otherwise we could offend Italians. All across the globe, if we do this wrong. 
All right, let's uh, let's turn up SpaceX. We're we're going down the pizza rabbit hole, thanks to thanks to TJ. But I like it. I like the thought. Now to make sure that the engine startup goes well, we also perform what's called engine chill. It started at about T minus seven minutes. We flow a small amount. Deep of dish is like lasagna for pizza. Yeah, I I can't do I can't do the deep dish. I'm not I'm not a fan. I'm sorry. Sorry for everybody that loves deep dish pizza. Full flow of super chilled liquid oxygen on engine start. Dragon also began its startup sequence at T minus 35. You know what I can do? Sorry, this is this has nothing to do with rockets, but TJ started this, so everybody everybody can blame TJ for us getting down the getting down the rabbit hole. Um, you know what you should try if you haven't is tomato pie. That's a that's like a Utica, New York thing. That uh, you know, this is that's like my home turf here. So uh, if you haven't tried tomato pie or you don't know what tomato pie is, you should go look that up. And if you're ever in Utica, New York, have some tomato pie or chicken riggies. Which it, now 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 I'm hungry because I haven't had lunch yet. Ah, oh, TJ. <laughs> All right, let's listen to Rocket stuff. Walk through these final moments of the terminal count, Marie. Yeah, Shiva, as you said, weather um, trending in the better direction. Uh, it was a little bit, uh, a little bit hairy for a couple minutes there. Uh, volume within the last, oh, I want to say maybe 13 minutes or so. It was right around T minus uh, 19 or 18 minutes. We heard about some so lightning strikes in the area, not coming within that 10 mile radius of the pad, uh, but that was a watch item. It looks like um, they are not expecting uh, lightning to be an issue to come that close. Um, and that cell that I mentioned to the south of the pad looks like Dragon uh, has transitioned to, to configure for terminal count. Uh, between that little bit more separation. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. Okay, so we heard that call that Dragon is now on cool. internal power. Um, again, as, as Shiva in. mentioned, the team has already conducted uh, its pre-launch engine chill. Again, uh, this is when SpaceX injects a small amount of super chilled liquid oxygen to prepare those Merlin engines inside the first stage uh, to allow for full propellant flow during flight. See those clouds rolling in. That's our that's our concern today. The clouds and you can hear the uh, hissing from some of that liquid oxygen venting off the side of the rocket as it meets that uh, strong warm. back retract in progress. There you go, strong back retract. We just heard Coming the call off. out there as well uh, for strong back retract. The strong back is the truss structure next to Falcon 9 that provides propellants and power to the vehicle. So you can see the clamp arms are opening around the second stage. And uh, the strong back will retract a couple of degrees away from the vertical position, helping to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent. In these last few minutes, Falcon 9 is performing a set of health checks on its primary communications, avionics, and propulsion systems in preparation for flight. We'll continue to hear callouts if the engines are sufficiently chilled in and for some of these milestones that are coming up next. And there you can see the uh, strong back starting its retraction away from the vertical position. Hey, my friend Mike Mike sent over a super chat. Mike, 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 Mike. Thanks for the super chat, Mike Mike. Said greetings from the Netherlands. Thanks very much. Thanks for the support. Greetings to you, Mike Mike. And so we saw uh, that strong back or transport erector uh, retract uh, ever so slightly from the Falcon 9 rocket. It will uh, retract fully. Uh, Hello, bleed verification. Just as we get to the moment of liftoff to allow uh, for Falcon 9 to clear the pad. Um, also happening now are some checks of the second stage thrust vector control actuators. Uh, that is often referred to as an engine wiggle test. And this is when SpaceX moves the thrust stage nozzles. And we just heard the call for uh, the stage one locks load complete. Again, that uh, engine wiggle test happening uh, now to make sure that the guidance hardware is go for flight. SpaceX will do the exact same checkouts Ooh, on the first stage engines, and that will happen just a few seconds before ignition. Stay away, clouds. Keep those away. Can we yeah, do we it? just heard that call out for first stage lock load complete. Uh, next major activity here will be second stage lock load complete. Oh, it usually look. happens around the T minus two minute mark, uh, and that wraps up propellant oh, loading for it. Falcon 9 oh. until liftoff. You can kind of see, look at the water tower overflowing there, it's just dumping water off the side. That's pretty normal. Dragon it's when it when it fills up, they just over it starts overflowing off the side. So uh, the water flying everywhere. You can see it on camera here now. Completely normal. Ready to go for Dragon is in auto rendezvous. 
with the International Space Station, weather continuing to trend favorably as Dragon transitions into its uh, ascent state. This will be our last big vent here. This is ground gas closeout where they drain all the propellant lines in that transporter erector, the big tower next to the rocket. You see the last big vent right here, also normal. Looking good. Hey, Graham, thanks for the super chat. Graham's got me muted. But you can't mute the Space Lobster Nation. And weather remaining uh, go Love it. as we space are Lobster at the T-10. minus one minute mark when Dragon will transition to internal power. There we go. Are we going to get a go from the launch Top direct? Nine, start up. Dragon is in countdown. Listen for the go. From the LD. LD, go for launch. launch. Oh, that's good. Here we go. Launch director pulled the go HD for launch. Flight. So, with, so with that, all systems are currently go for just over T minus 30 seconds to lift off. T minus 30 seconds. Here we go, Space Lobster Nation. Give me a go, no go in the chat. The hold down clamps at the pad, and as I mentioned earlier, that strong back right next to the to the rocket will retract the rest of the way, clearing the way for liftoff. Dave, do you want to press for flight? T minus 15 seconds. Let's do it. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Liftoff. And liftoff of the 22nd SpaceX cargo resupply mission bringing new solar arrays to the International Space Station. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Falcon 9 has launched. We're coming up on the next major milestone. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's when the Falcon stresses on the vehicle signing. will be the highest. This is a great view. I love great this. View. So in preparation for maximum aerodynamic pressure, we throttle down those Merlin 1D engines. Now that we're through that point, we'll continue to we'll throttle back up continue on to the next of our sequence of events. We have several happening in rapid succession. That'll be main engine cutoff, followed by a stage separation. Then we'll have a first stage flip maneuver, second engine start number one, and then a boost back burn on the first stage. Now, main engine cutoff, or MECO, that's where all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage will shut down. That's followed shortly after by stage separation, when both the first and back second is stages will separate. And pack is chilling. From there, the first stage will flip to prepare itself for entry. A few seconds later, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to boost the Dragon into a low Earth orbit. That's called SES-1. And then finally, on the first stage, we'll have boost back burn start to slow down the first stage in preparation for re-entry. So again, those five events, Miko, stage separation, first stage flip maneuver, second engine start, and then the boost back burn all coming up just in under 10 seconds from now. This is kind of interesting because we don't usually see the, the camp, the, the housing frame there on the camera. And that was that was pretty clear. Hey, Miko. There we go. Separation. Stage separation confirmed. Stiffener ring break off in here. Back. Ignition. Off the engine bell, right? After ignition. Stage one boost back startup. So successful Merlin vacuum engine startup. First stage has begun its boost back burn. That burn expected to last about uh, 30 or so seconds. Here's a shot of the second stage Merlin vacuum nozzle. You can see it's starting to heat up as we begin this burn. The second stage will continue to burn here for several minutes until about the T plus eight minute mark.
Stage one boost back shutdown. If you're just joining us, welcome. You're watching a live webcast for the 22nd commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. This is SpaceX's 17th launch of the year, and we are flying a cargo configuration of our new Dragon spacecraft. On the right-hand side of your screen is the second stage, which is carrying the Dragon spacecraft into orbit. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see Falcon 9's first stage with the grid fins extending. It just completed its boost back burn is, and is making its way back to our drone ship. So now, the rocket has to do more than just go up. It has to go sideways really fast. That liftoff gravity is pulling straight down on the rocket. But as we ascend, we tilt the, the engines. That's called gimbling. And that begins to turn the rocket horizontally. We're still going up, but we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. That maneuver is called a gravity turn. The rocket typically needs to go about 7.5 kilometers per second, or about 17,500 miles an hour, to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and to get into orbit. So that's what the second stage is doing right now. So just to eliminate some confusion, they did talk about a boost back burn. It is not an RTLS landing. They're not going back to the launch site and landing on land on the pad. They're still going to land on the drone ship. Uh, they haven't. They have extra fuel margin, uh, so they're they they do a boost back burn. So the the landing is a bit shorter. Just the single center Merlin engine to bring. Just meaning closer closer to shore. You can see the grid fins that are extended on the left hand side of your screen. We use those for atmospheric control. They help steer the Falcon 9 to make sure we make our way back to that drone ship as we get into the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And you'll occasionally see periodic uh, bursts of a white gas uh, like that. That's our attitude control system giving us little corrections to our attitude. The next major event coming up here for the first stage is entry burn. Three of the Merlin 1D engines will ignite. Second stage burn continuing to look nominal. Second stage has a little ways to go. It won't be done with this burn until about the T plus eight minute mark. All right, so we're coming up on uh, the entry burn here. Uh, that's good. That should. Yes, it's safe. I think my timeline might nominal. might be slightly off. Stage one entry burn startup. Yep, there it is. So with that, three got the wrong time Merlin listed. 1D engines on the first stage igniting to reduce the vehicle's velocity. You can see that on the bottom left corner of your scene screen. This burn expected stage to last one about burn seconds. Stage one entry burn So from here, the grid fins will continue to take the first stage towards our drone ship stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. At this point, T plus six and a half minutes into flight, second stage is making its way to the initial orbit to drop off the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. And uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9's first stage on the left, the second stage on the right. We had a an on-time liftoff at 1.29 p.m. Eastern time, nominal ascent so far. Talking a little bit more about stage the one transonic. Talking a little bit more about the first stage. So the next major event coming up is that landing burn. Landing burn is what will bring the vehicle speed rapidly down to zero. So this landing burn or this landing is supposed to be right at about Eight seven shots of the first stage during reentry. Once we get closer to the drone ship, we will deploy our four oh, symmetric landing legs yeah, around is. the base of the first stage for hopefully a nice soft touchdown on that drone ship. You can see a shot of that on the right hand side of your screen. Look at this. I love this clear all the way into landing. Look at that. Oh, that looks great. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stick it. Oh, it's a little off center. Bring it in. All right. That's OK. That's all right. We're still on. <laughs> Picture perfect landing of that Falcon 9 for the first one stage. Landing. First landing for this first stage, 86 successful recovery overall for SpaceX. That's a great Fantastic. view, that's awesome. Now coming up shortly, second stage is not done. It will be coming up on a second engine cutoff. About 30, uh, excuse me, under 30 seconds from now. 
It's been burning that whole time since stage separation to bring the 7,000 pounds of cargo into the initial orbit around our planet. And you can okay, see move over here so you can see the close stage two velocity. telemetry now. So this should be a this should be a pretty quick uh, series of events here. After uh, once we get to cut off, which is right there. Shutdown of the second stage engine. From here, we'll be looking at telemetry. Make sure we are in the intended orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. Fantastic. Nominal so orbit. So the second stage has just one major task left is commanding separation of the Dragon spacecraft just a few minutes from now. Until separation, the second stage will be making some small adjustments during this coast prior to Dragon separation. And we're hoping, we're hoping to have video, there's some video, into so the unpressurized cargo section of Dragon. This video from the top of the second stage. We got a good look there at the new rollout solar arrays that Cargo Dragon is bringing to the International Space Station. Yep, and that's one of that's one of the reasons why they had so to switch separation of the Dragon spacecraft. Switch docking at ports. About T plus twelve minutes. We have a little bit of a coast here for ground operators in mission control behind me to ensure that the vehicle is in the right configuration, that there's no uh, conditions that we may want to watch out for after separation. But Dragon and the Stage Two right now in orbit. Coming up after that separation uh, event, which hopefully we'll get a view like this of Dragon gently floating away, the Dragon spacecraft will begin to perform some of its own checkouts. Dragon is equipped with 12 service section Draco thrusters that are used primarily for attitude control and proximity next to the space station. It's also got four Draco thrusters on the top of the vehicle underneath its nose cone that we use for our uh, thrust maneuvers to help us rendezvous with the International Space Station. So yeah, there's so again, only successful oh. ascent, successful recovery of our first stage just a few minutes ago. You're looking at a live shot into the Cargo Dragon uh, unpressurized section from the second stage that is in orbit around our planet. Our next major activity coming up shortly, that is Dragon separation from Falcon 9's second stage. So just to give me an idea, uh, Dragon is over the Atlantic Ocean right now. Here's the current position of the ISS, just about to head over. Something a little bit different about uh, this Dragon spacecraft. Overhead. If uh, you followed our first version of Dragon, you'd know that uh, it had deployable solar arrays. This version of Dragon has conformal solar arrays on the body of the spacecraft. So those are mounted along the exterior panel of the trunk that we're looking into right now. Those provide power for the spacecraft as it makes its way to the space station. Dragon separation confirmed. There it goes. Off it goes to chase down Lovely planet on the left-hand side. Dragon floating away. You can see the rollout solar arrays from this view atop Falcon 9 second stage, watching Dragon gently float away. They'll use the Canada so again, arm to pull those out. Activities coming up Dragon. It will begin its service section Draco checkouts, followed shortly after that by a no the nose cone Expected loss of signal uh, opening. Go. And uh, that's going to complete my coverage here from Hawthorne. But why don't we check in with Courtney at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Courtney. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat over it here uh, while Courtney's talking. Uh, but... Yeah, that's uh, that's it for today. We got a, a successful launch, successful separation. Now they've got to open the nose cone. Uh, they've got to expose some of the... Uh, Draco thrusters, not the Super Draco abort engines, but the Draco thrusters, which is used for like navigation and things like that. So they do have uh, thrusters on board. They're called Draco thrusters, not to be confused with the Super Draco 
abort engines. Um, and some of the, the nose cone there has the forward thrusters are underneath the nose cone. So they need to open the nose cone in order to use those forward thrusters. But uh, yeah, Virginia says that went fast. Yeah, that was a there's a quick launch, uh, not an RTLS landing, which is a little bit confusing. Uh, I forgot to put the boost back burn on the events list there, but it, they did do a boost back burn just to to slow it up a bit so it didn't go quite so far downrange. Helps with recovery operations a little bit. They can get it back to Port Canaveral much faster, but successful landing, which is uh, which is good. And we can kind of see uh, we can see the dragon over on the left there heading out into uh to to go chase down the space station uh why only one burn uh the the dragon capsule itself i don't know if they've published like the actual burns that the dragon capsule will do but they don't need they don't need the power uh of the uh and the fuel reserve from the actual uh second stage of the falcon 9 to chase down the the space station the dragon can do that itself so they put it into the parking orbit and dragon will do the rest of the burn so it's direct into parking orbit uh no need for uh for the second stage of the falcon 9 to uh to circularize or anything like that uh, second stage the second stage should come back it's still it's, it's gonna deorberate right it's gonna it's gonna deorbit or deorberate and deorberate and it will uh, break up in the atmosphere. They don't recover that, but it will break up in the atmosphere when it comes and uh, and deorbit. It's gonna deorberate. Uh, let's see what else we had here. Is the second stage thrown away? Yes. Yeah. It's a, it'll it'll deorbit and deorberate and it will break up in the atmosphere. Not recoverable. Going too fast. You would need extra fuel to slow it down. You would need to add like heat shielding and things like that to uh, withstand the re-entry for it. All of that adds weight. So you need more fuel to lift that extra weight. And then you would need more fuel to lift that extra fuel. And then you would need more fuel to lift that extra fuel. It, it just, it becomes a difficult problem. So they have no plans. They, they had talked about maybe trying to recover the second stage, but those plans have been abandoned. And now they're just, they're going to focus on Starship for full reusability. What about the debris? Uh, yeah, no, no debris. Uh, they're also, they're in a very low orbit. So this orbit itself, I don't know uh, if I still, I don't have it up here. But if you're, if you're one of our, our Patreon or YouTube channel members, uh, maybe they could share it in the public discord. You can join our public discord, but I shared a, picture or maybe i did share it in the public discord i shared a picture on our discord about the debris by altitude and these lower altitudes down where the space station are actually have very little debris because of the atmospheric drag um, so it's a relatively clean space there because all the stuff that's in these lower orbits eventually comes back like there's orbital decay and eventually with just a little bit of atmospheric drag, they will come back and they'll re-enter. It's gonna deorberate. So uh, this this altitude is relatively low amounts of debris. A lot of our like space debris and abandoned stuff we have is at higher orbits, where if it malfunctions, it's just gonna stay there for decades. Why are there no cameras on any other part of the rocket? Uh, there are a lot of cameras that they don't show us. Remember, this is not an entertainment show. This is, uh, you're, you're watching engineering cameras. The cameras are there for engineering purposes where the engineers need to be able to see parts of the vehicle. Uh, it's not, this is not a reality TV show, really. It's, they're, they just happen to be showing us the, the cameras that they have for engineering purposes. Uh, let's see, save the squids. Yeah, little baby squids heading to the International Space Station. That's kind of cool. How did they manage the weight of the camera? Didn't it increase while in rocket? How light can be the camera? I'm not sure I completely follow you, but cameras these days are extremely light. I mean, here's my, my old GoPro. Like, this is a GoPro 7. I mean, this is old by today's date, uh, by today's technology, but this is, uh, 
this is tiny. It only it only weighs like forty grams, I think. So it's uh, it's I mean you can you can throw these GoPros on there. That you don't need anything crazy fancy. It's not like we need uh, gigantic cinema cameras. Like throw a GoPro on it. GoPro, it's got you know on the side and you insert your favorite action camera here. It doesn't have to be GoPro, uh, but uh, you got power HDMI on the side. Connect that to a, a computer, a capture card of some sort, and boom, you got uh, you got video. So uh, you don't you don't need much much weight for camera. Put cameras on all side all sides of the rocket. Yeah, I mean, well, you got to remember the camera. The camera does have like a protective housing that it's in that it's po that it's poking through. Plus, you need, you know, so it's not just you can't just throw cameras wherever you want. Um, you, you know, you do need to plan, you know, make sure that you get the camera's going to survive if you want to have, you know, usable video. Uh, you also have to plan for, you know, where, what telemetry streams are you going to use for the video? You know, do you have the bandwidth? Do you have the frequency allocation for telemetry streams? Do you have the computer computing power for the telemetry streams? Do you want to dedicate computing power to this, to having extra video? Is it really necessary? Would you rather have that computing power for something else? So if, there's a lot to consider. You can't just go throwing cameras around and, you know, just stick a little double-sided tape and be like, here, we'll stick this to the booster. <laughs> like, that's... There's some there's some more considerations to that. Uh, ra yeah, oh, Raspberry Pi cameras. That's uh, what Tony Tony Foley mentioned here. Uh, ra yeah, Raspberry Pi cameras are, like, really itty-bitty. They're tiny-tiny. Uh, let's see. Dude, it's Elon Musk. He can put cameras on. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if they want, if they wanted more cameras, they could put more cameras on. Like, it's not, it's not that they can't put cameras on. They could. The question is, do they, do they need them? Do they, do they want them? I'm sure we want them, but what we want doesn't matter. Do they want them? Uh, what if the thing separates from the rocket and lands on a city? Eventually, has to come back somewhere. Yeah, so they have. There's contingency scenarios, and all of that stuff is planned for. I mean, one, this is why we launch over the ocean. So if something goes wrong, they can, you know, it's it's going to land in the ocean. And as you get to the latter parts of the mission, like so, we could even. We could, we could even model this. Should we model it in Kerbal? <laughs> I don't know if people would appreciate this. We could we could model it in Kerbal. Did I close Flight Club? No, I have it open still. Let us let me show you in Flight Club. I don't, maybe we'll do Kerbal too, but... So, as you uh, as you get higher and higher in your orbit... Let's see, can I... Can, can we... No, no, why is it sideways? Don't go sideways. Oh, 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 yeah, maybe this way. Okay, there, better. So, so yeah, your your trajectory here is par. Oh wait, you want we want this view. Your trajectory here is is kind of parabolic, right? It's like throwing a ball. It goes up, comes down. This this parabolic arc grows wider and wider, and the faster the vehicle starts to go, the faster that arc grows. Right? Stay with me. So in the early parts of the launch, you could, you know, the this is growing really, really slowly. And you got, if you have time, if there's a failure at some point, it could, it would come back in the ocean. Eventually, so here's cutoff over the Atlantic Ocean, right? It's not very far into the mission is where we have cutoff. But by the time you get to this, the speed is increasing so quickly that this parabolic arc isn't growing you know, at, at this slow speed anymore. Now it's growing very fast. And so in order, if you had a failure that was going to come down over population, let's say, like say over here in Europe or something like that, like it would have to fail at like an exact millisecond because that parabolic arc grows and passes over that space so quickly. So you have a very, very, very small chance of that actually happening. And 
you would also have the capability, you know, the dragon capsule has uh, has thrusters on it, so, you know, potentially they could do something about it if it failed, but yeah, very, very unlikely, especially towards those later parts of the mission. Did that make any sense to anybody? <laughs> it made sense in my head. I don't know if it made sense to anybody else. What time is Rendezvous? June 5th, 9 a.m. UTC. It's about uh, 5, 5 a.m. Eastern time, my time here. That's that's docking. Is this mission for the broken the broken robot arm on the ISS? So I don't think the 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 arm is not actually broken. I think we're talking about the debris strike that was on the Canada arm. I think the arm is functioning just fine, but they did discover that there was some debris that hit the Canada arm. Um, but I, I think the arm is still functioning just fine. But yes, they're going to use the Canada the arm to pull the solar panels, the rollout solar panels, out of the trunk area. That's one of the reasons why they had to switch docking ports so they could do that. And uh, they're going to, uh, they have to use the Zenith docking port to pull those out. So amazing they managed to keep the first stage camera online during the landing burn. Yeah, I, so I think they've done some upgrades to the cameras in terms of like, um, I think they're using Starlink for a lot of the telemetry now, as opposed to uh, as opposed to sending to like the, uh, I don't know if they were using the Iridium constellation or back to ground stations directly with uh, radio, but I think now they're using Starlink for a lot of their telemetry. At least that was the plan. I don't know if it's actually implemented, but I do believe and uh, Nomadic uh, has, has a, a lot of inside contact who also kind of confirms that uh, they, they're, they may be using Starlink now. Starlink, the, the big, the nice thing for Starlink is that uh, that single antenna is called a phased array antenna. And they have, instead of just actually having one radio signal, there's like a whole bunch of them. There's like a, a few dozen radio signals that come out of that. And those radio signals combine in front of the antenna as a single transmission stream. But the nice thing about that is you can change you can shift what frequency or what um, rate that each of the individual antennas are broadcasting at, and it can instantly change the direction you're broadcasting. So if they all transmit together in sequence, it would it comes out directly in front of the antenna. But if you shift the phase just a tiny little bit, instead of it coming directly out, now it's going this way. And you didn't have to actually move the antenna to do that. The antenna is still pointing the same way. You just, with software, changed how the frequency shifts between the array of antennas. That's why it's called a phased array antenna. With software, you can change that and instantly change the direction that your radio signal is going, which is really, really cool. And that's, they need that for Starlink because they need to be able to quickly switch where that, where the Starlink antenna is communicating with a, a satellite in orbit because it passes overhead pretty quickly. So they, they, uh, you need to be able to quickly change that without a lot of moving parts. Like you don't want the, you don't want the a Starlink antenna on top of your house having to constantly be like, <laughs> somebody's gonna gif that, I can see it already. But anyways, they're like, you know, they'd be moving and then all of a sudden it's gotta be like, all right, next one. And then moving and then the next one. <laughs> so you, you don't want that. Just point it in one direction. Let the software do it. Can I get one for my TV? Yeah, well, eventually, I'm sure you probably get the uh, TV service via Starlink. Oh, and we got a NASA space flight, uh, something or another. <laughs> they must have ended the stream. All right, uh, let's see. So the, the antenna is constantly scanning. Yeah, Starlink antennas. Well, so what Starlink antennas do when you first start them up is they, they do scan the sky, figure out where they are, figure out what satellites are available, and then they kind of they plan ahead and they know exactly what to what to communicate with. So then the Starlink antenna, as a satellite is passing overhead, is constantly with software repositioning its transmission signal to 
transmit to the satellite as it's moving overhead without moving the actual dish itself. Can we have a replay, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, are you you want a replay of the uh, the replay of, of me imitating Starlink or of the actual launch itself? Uh, I'm going to I'm I'm going to demonstrate something in, in Kerbal here real quick, and then we're going to end it. <laughs> What time's connection with the ISS? June 5th, 9 a.m. UTC. The camera on, of course, I still love you is the one that fails. The telemetry camera just didn't have a link, a link before. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think the, I do think that uh, that kind of holds weight to it being uh, using Starlink now. Uh, and I, I think the old telemetry cameras used to use ground-based stations, and that's why we would lose the telemetry camera as it went over the horizon. We'd lose the onboard feed, like, just as it got to cloud level. So we'd lose that from the ground stations. But now we have clean video all the way through from onboard. So I think I think we're getting that with Starlink. Booster view is be better anyways. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. Uh that booster view booster view is is much better. I like I like the onboard view. I'd rather see that than the actual camera from the from the drone ship any day. Especially because you could see the you could see the drone ship coming up like from the camera's perspective. Like that's pretty cool. Let me see. Do Starship have capabilities to travel beyond beyond Mars? Uh, I mean, I don't think there's any plans for it to travel beyond Mars, but uh, the, the big issue for Starship traveling beyond Mars is probably going to be fuel, uh, because you're, you're not going to have enough fuel to travel beyond Mars and come back. So you'd have to figure out some sort of way to refuel the thing in order to do something like that. That that would be the the big difficulty is is fuel. Um so I'm so I'm going to say no because there's no it's not really any plans to go anywhere past Mars. And I I don't think they've given any thought to actually doing that. Uh, let's see what else we missed, and then we'll jump on, and, uh, we're, we're gonna launch a, a, a dragon capsule in, in Kerbal real quick. Real quick! Why don't we do that now? Switch over to this. And we'll go here. Let's see... Let's see if I'm any better at this. I practiced. We practiced with some of our Patreon members the other day. Over in uh, over in Discord. Are you flying for us today? Yes, sir. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly a dragon capsule. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it goes. Let me. I'm gonna change the settings because I want to turn the music off. Because we got we already got music. Go here. See, we'll see if we can do this. See, uh, see if it's a big failure or if I'm any better. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to. I've got. I added a new, uh, a new old plugin, an old new plugin. Whoa. Um, I had, uh, I had a plugin a long time ago called FMRS. That's technically not compatible with. This version of Kerbal, but uh, let's see. This one. This the one we want. So it's technically not compatible, but I added it anyways, trying to see if maybe it would if it would work. Oh, this is old Cargo Dragon. We don't want old Cargo Dragon. We want. Uh, I guess I don't have. Oh, there it is, right there. Cargo Dragon. I, I knew I had one. 
this out of the way. Up here. Yeah, there we go. Cargo dragon. We don't want... Let's get, uh, get rid of the soot because we just launched a new booster. And we want to... Let's see. I'm going to go here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this camera view. And then I'll, I'll put the timeline up. I know the timeline's done, but in case anybody joins the stream and wants to know what's happening, they'll, they'll know they're late to the party. <laughs> Brent says, I'm glad you're doing this after the mission has been a success instead of the last time when I jinxed it with Electron. <laughs> I know, that was... Uh, that was not good. Okay, let's see. Let me let's see if we can fly this, this guy. Let's let's see if we're any good at it. Um, let's see. Can we aim the camera here? That's better. Okay, here we go. Little uh, late afternoon launch. Sun's low in the sky. Here we go. Throttle up. Terminal count. Give me a... Uh, this is the launch director on countdown one. Uh, polling for chat. Uh, pol polling the chat. Are we go or no go? <laughs> All right. Everyone's got their popcorn, says Suzanne. All right. I, I think I got this this time. I think I got it. I'm, I'm feeling good. We'll see. Here's here's our cargo dragon. Ready to go. Filled up. Ready to go. Chat is go. I can see it. All right. Launch director on countdown one. Uh, this is uh, Space Lobster Nation is uh, go for launch. Here we go. Three. Two. Ignition. One. Lift off. Yeah. Space Lobster, launch command. We've cleared the tower. Roll program. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go into a a polar launch or polar orbit just so that we have a chance to land the booster. Do a John. John Klopfer. Thanks for the super chat, John. John says, do super heavy below Starship. Starship again, 2.0 after. That was sweet. I think you're referring to Falcon Heavy below Starship. When I did our Falcon Heavy Starship launch, which was ridiculous. It's a lot of fun, though. All right. Oh, yep. There's Max Q. Let's see if we can. Let's. Oh, easy, easy. Easy. All right. We got this. We got this. All right. Bring it down. Bring it down. Here we go. We're up over the atmosphere. Here's the question. Can we... Can we do it? Here... First stage shut down. Separation. Easy. Easy. Ignition. Don't blow up the first stage. And we're good. Okay. There we go. All right, we're doing. We're we're okay. So far, so good. Easy does it. We didn't blow anything up yet. Uh, we forgot uh, separation and uh, ignition. Confir what, whatever they say. <laughs> All 
All right, now the confusing thing for a lot of people is I'm going to pitch... We're going to stay in right about here, and I'm going to kind of actually pitch below the horizon, which you can't see because I'm in the way. But if I jump over here, you can see my little nav ball over on the left side. I'm pitching below the horizon. I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do this, but this is going to let me go direct into a almost circular orbit instead of going parabolic, coasting to Apogee, and doing a second burn. I'm going to try to do this in a single burn by pitching down below the horizon. And you can see up at the very top, to the left of my altitude, uh, my altitude indicator there, uh, you can see my little heads-up display, which is gonna, which is showing me, showing my orbital parameters, and we're almost... There we go. All right, so it's not quite circular, but that that is our direct to a parking orbit. It's it's uh, elliptical, but stable, right? So it's in for 155 by 76 kilometers. There, the stable orbit, our our perigee, is is uh, 76 kilometers, which is a safe altitude in Kerbal Space Program, so we're good there. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll go back here. Back to here, and we need to do uh, Dragon Separation. And away goes Dragon. Okay. Our Dragon is separated. Now, we're going to go back, and we're going to land. This is that FMRS plug-in I was talking about. This is going to let me, this is going to, like, rewind and go back in time. So I can go back to here. Oh, yep, just pay no attention to that. It's fine. <laughs> Sometimes the plug-in kind of glitches out a little bit. go and I'm for uh, we, we may cheat a little bit just for the sake of the live stream let's get our grid fins out so we're still ascending which is important to note because uh, the, the Falcon 9 even after separation the first stage booster continues to ascend until it reaches Apogee, so we're gonna see, uh... Let's see if we can do this. We did do... Today, they did a boost back burn. So... Maybe we'll do a boost back burn and try to... I don't know. I don't know if we have the fuel for, for a boost back burn. Although... <laughs> although our landing site right now is in the mountains, so... <laughs> maybe we should risk it. It's upside down. Yeah, I have it. I have it pointing. Uh, tor. I have it pointing retrograde. It's, bas it's basically following its orbit. So because it's going up, it's it's going. Uh, the engines are pointing in the direction of travel. So right here is uh, almost apogee. Right there is apogee. Now we're going down. So there's our there's a little boost back burn. We're still gonna uh, we're gonna land on those mountains, which is gonna be a problem. We may we may do some more cheating, turn on infinite propellant, so I don't at least so we can demo this. See if we can. We'll see if we can land it. Where's it? Where is it gonna land? It says it's gonna land out there. So we can see our 
our estimated landing spot out there. Let's see if we can do it. We got a suicide burn coming up. Uh, you can look right up. Uh, where is it? Right. Let's get rid of this. Right here, here's our suicide burn countdown. 16, 15, we probably should have done an entry burn. We're coming in hot. 10, 9, oh boy, we are really coming in hot. Yep, we're screaming it. Can we do it? We'll see if it'll, if my mod will cooperate today. Yeah, ignition. We got this. We got it. Come on. Oh, we're gonna land right on a tree. Right on a hill. Oh boy. Alright, well. Here we go. Here we go. Aim the camera here. Here we go. And oh, 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 where are you going? Oh no! Oh no! Oh, we were so close! Uh oh, and we well, I, well that was that's a thing. Man, I don't know what just happened. I think it might, I think it freaked out a little. We were so close. Ah, oh, come on. All right. Well, that's a shame. All right. So here's our second stage. We we switch back to the second stage. We're gonna. You think we could land the second stage? <laughs> I don't know. There we go. You can see like little, little tiny, little tiny uh, RCS thrusters on the second stage. Let's see if we can flip this around. So there goes our, there goes our crew dragon. Second stage has no landing gear. Yeah, there's no land. We're just gonna we're just gonna crash this into the ocean, just like the real thing. Except I don't know if I'm lined up in an ocean anywhere. <laughs> we might crash it into land. There we go. Just a quick burn to get it out of the atmosphere. Then we'll fast forward a bit. I think I targeted an ocean, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Here it goes. Entry interface. We're just gonna let it tumble. I'm gonna turn off all the all the reaction control systems. Just let it tumble back to Earth. Just landed on the engine bell. I, I could try to land it on the engine bell. Because it probably, in Kerbal, it's probably going to survive. In real life, it would not survive. But in Kerbal, it'll probably survive. Oh, oh, the heat is, the heat is rising! Where is it gonna land? Oh, it might, I can't tell if that's water or land underneath <laughs> underneath me. Kind of looks like land. I was I was thinking it's water. Nope, definitely land. Well, let's see if it'll let's see if we can land it on the engine bell because it survived. We have no landing legs. Let's see if this one's better. Will, will this go better than the first stage? It's actually going surprisingly well, which is 
ridiculous. <laughs> nope! Came in a little too hot. That that second stage engine doesn't perform very well in the in the atmosphere. Okay, well, there's that one. But uh fortunately. We uh we still have the main the main mission. So there what? No! How did this happen? Oh man. Okay, well abort! <laughs> oh our plugin glitched out so we couldn't Oh well. Yeah. Perfect. Just like we planned it. <laughs> okay. Cannot here. Open. <laughs> Open the shroud. Toggle. Let's see. Why can't I can't deploy the parachutes? How come? Turn on the lights. We're good. Close shroud. Auto shut. Do engine control from here. To toggle torque. No. Okay, well. There's our docking lights. Kind of cool. Okay, well, uh, that was a uh, that was something. <laughs> what was the mission again? I don't know. I don't know what the mission is. Today, this mission or the actual mission? The actual mission is to resupply the space station. <laughs> Pitch that to SpaceX, they may need the landing profile, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. I'll uh, I'll shoot him an email. Be like, yo, Elon, I got something for you. Just just check this out. We, I, I got gotcha. you. I, I got it. I got it all figured out. We're good to go. <laughs> Get the picnic going with hot dog. Yeah, right. We got we're just nice little uh, you know, just hanging out. A little afternoon uh, in the cargo dragon. I brought. What is that over there? Like a mushroom? What? Is, what is this? Can you see that in the distance? I got a. It's like a. That like little yellow thing. It looks like a giant mushroom, <laughs> or, or I guess a yellow tree or something or shrub. I don't know what that is. Oh, here's another one. Must be a tree, a shrub of some kind. No parachute needed. Yeah, who needs parachutes? We don't need that. All right, everybody. That's it. I, I we tried. We did one. I, I guess I still have to get better. I still, I still don't got it. <laughs> we'll, we'll try again. We'll try again another time. The space, we, space lobster ate the tea temp. Yeah, that's that's the answer. Still the answer. But uh, we're gonna hang out in the park. I'll get better. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with me here today. Uh, I will. Uh, we'll do another. Actually, there's another one coming up. What is the next launch coming up? It's the Sirius XM launch, right? Uh, that's coming up in just a couple of days, isn't it? Uh, Sunday. So uh, I think I might be covering that one, but it is kind of early in the morning. It's like uh, 12.30, like midnight, my time. So I, I probably will cover it, but uh, I, I, I'll decide here in the next couple of days. I'll let you know on Discord. So consider joining our Discord. And uh, if you want to take the extra step, consider becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube channel member. It helps me uh, do stuff like this, so. All right. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, I'll uh, see you next time and uh, maybe see some of you over on the, the Discord afterwards. So thanks for joining in. My name's Tori. This is Overlook Horizon. I'll get better at Kerbal. I promise. I can't tell you how much I'll get better. But I'll try to get at least a little bit better. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye. Have a good rest of the day. See you later.
Thank you.